Hi people, this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. And as you can see, it's feeding time here at Po Farm Kennels. And we are going to see exactly what these dogs are being fed. And if you're interested in keeping big dogs, you need to pay attention. Because we said, getting that dog that you want, you need to know what it entails. And this time, we are looking at exactly the barbells. What do you feed your barbells? What do you feed your big dog once you acquire it? Let's see. Uh, hello guys, trusting you all okay? Uh, kindly let me introduce you to Moses. As Moses is going to, uh, we are feeding the dogs, we are feeding the dogs. The other guy there is uh, Steve, he's also going to help him. So as you can see, we give them uh, pellets in the morning. Uh, not a very big serving, just that serving is enough. Yeah. So as you can see, we have uh, three big male dogs. We have three females. We have one puppy. So they are arranged in that order. So this is breakfast. Breakfast, there's pellets. Breakfast, we also do eggs. Take this. And then for breakfast, we also do goat milk. Very, very good for their health. As you can see, it's only just a little scoop. This is enough. Uh, maintain quality, let the quality be good, but it doesn't have to be too much. As you can see what Moses is doing, Moses is mixing uh, oil uh, to the pellets. That's just to make sure that the, uh, the dog uh, shines, begins shining from within. Just a little oil. As you, uh, uh, we are on the pellets. We're also mixing with eggs, just to take the protein a little higher to ensure that the dog is uh, has enough protein. Okay, uh, we use oil for the sake of the dog skin. You could use um, uh, cod liver oil. You could use olive oil. Just make sure you serve it raw. Yeah, like that, that's enough. Hmm? Masha. Uh, stitch. All right, which one is for, which one is Marcus's? This. Marcus put two. Marcus wake up two pellets, eh? Two, two whatever. So uh, we feed the dog uh, depending on size. The, the boys, we feed them two scoops. For the girls, so the females, we feed them one. Uh, so, uh -huh. all right. So uh, I've served two of my females. And after serving them, I realized that their appetite has gone high. So on top of the pellet, we add, that's enough. On top of the pellet, we add our Weetabix, just to ensure that we take care of the big appetite. So that's one female, there's another female. Uh, I think that's Stitch. Pia Masha, mtaka mwake ya? Yeah, we kept Pia Masha first. Uh, Tuanze na keo, kama na maziwa. After mixing your eggs and your pellets well, you have to add some milk. Enough. Normally, I just add the milk to make sure it reaches the same level with the pellets. Not too much milk. There's that one, yeah. Chunga is issuing in.
It's okay, it's okay. So you need to go to Masha. The Masha will be able to get the Masha. Yes, you will be able to get the as you can see, the milk, the, the kind of milk we use is goat milk. Uh, goat milk is more preferable than, uh, than the cow's milk. Actually, as, as they say it, uh, camel milk is 90% uh, dog's mother's milk, followed by goat milk. Goat milk should be around 80% uh, dog mother's milk. But cow milk uh, is not so good because it, it contains a lot of lactose. And as uh, you guys, I hope you know, Dogs lack lactase. They can't break down the lactose in the milk. So that will, uh, b b uh, will be a problem to their stomach. They'll have very, very loose stool. Uh, if you've noticed, there's one dog I've not put uh, for her, goat milk. Uh, I don't know why, but she has a, the goat milk gives her a problem in her stomach. So we are going to use lacto-free milk specifically for this one uh, dog. She's called Masha. Uh, you, you'll see the dog. Uh, so this guy is called Heavyweight Keo. Uh, this is uh, his stand for serving him his food. This stand is very important because uh, for heavy dogs, they didn't, they, they, they're not supposed to stoop too low when they're feeding because it will hurt their pastens. So the, dog should be, uh, the food should be brought somewhere close to their mouth. They're supposed to eat comfortably, just the way someone watching TV. You're supposed to watch TV while you're sitting upright, not bending, not going too high. So uh, we want to serve Keo. Uh, kindly bring us Keo's food. Uh, that's Keo's food. Uh, Keo is going to be served by our friend here known as Steve. From God to Good boy. Good boy. Go for it. Next online, we have our beautiful girl, Imara, uh, sorry, Zara, very beautiful. We're also serving her uh, using a stand. We also don't want Zara to hurt uh, her pastens. So you're going to see how Zara is going to be served her breakfast. Zara is going to be served with our uh, able guy known as Moses. Next online, we have the big boy. Uh, it's called Marcus. I think most of you guys know me as Marcus. This is the famous Marcus. Black, big, very well, uh, with a very good temperament. We call him Gentle Giant. Marcus is just resting, waiting for his food. Uh, Marcus will also serve him uh, using a stand to make sure, again, we take care of his past tense and all that. Let us some other penny down the can. Good boy. That's Marcus. Before he takes his breakfast, he usually says hello, as you can see. Very gentle. Next to online is our girl. We call her the head girl. Head girl Imara. She has a very, very beautiful head. Uh, most of the time when people see her, you could think he's, she's male. So as you can see, she's a, a very, very nice girl. Uh, we've, I've bre we've bred her to uh, Keo. As you can see, this is, what, this is how she behaves when she sees food around.
Uh, you've seen the four, the four dogs, the four canines. We have uh, two more. There's a, a new guy, the new boy in the block. His name is Tony Stitch. Let's go and show you Stony Stitch. Many, many guys call him Haifa, many guys call him a cow, but he's not a cow. He's Stony, he's Stitch, he's a piebald bobble. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, guys. This is the other side of the kennel. Here we have Mr. Stone Stitch. Uh, he's a piebald. Stony? Come say hi to everyone. Come here, boy. Come, come, Stone. Uh, Stony Stitch is uh, relaxed. I'm sure maybe that is his way of saying hi. But if he sees a plate, I'm sure he'll come out very fast. Come, big boy. Come here. Hmm? Yeah. Come, come, big boy. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. come, come. Come here. You guy, what is it? I say, say hi to everyone. Uh, Stony Stitch is uh, a piebald bobel. He's uh, six years old. He's been taken for a very long walk, so the guy is very tired. Uh, we, are trying to, we are trying to keep him fit, trying to give him walks. So in the morning after walks, this is how he looks. Let's go, boy. Come, let's go. Come, come, come. Good boy. That is Stony Stitch for you guys. So Stony Stitch, you're also going to give him his breakfast. Come here, big boy. As you can see, the guy never plays with breakfast. Uh, on Sunday, they usually uh, wish they usually stay without food. We call it prayer and fasting. As we go to church, they also go to church on Sunday. So on Monday, they never, never joke with their breakfast. This is how it goes down. Uh, we're moving. We are finishing up. Last, but of course not the least, we have a very, very beautiful girl. She's called uh, Masha Bear. She's six months, but she looks extremely amazing. Masha, your breakfast is there. Morning, baby. Come here. Morning. This is Masha for you. Yeah, of course, she has to come and say hi. Come here, girl. Yeah, this is a liver German Shepherd. I know we guys are used to, uh, uh, how is it called? Black and tan, sable, German Shepherd. Uh, maybe some of you know there's also solid black German Shepherd. This is yet another shade of liver, oh, sorry, of German Shepherd. It's called liver Shepherd. Uh, she has a liver nose. Many guys call it pink nose, but this is how liver Shepherds look like. We also have Sissy's pup. Uh, this is Sissy's pop. We also have Sissy's pop here. Uh, Sissy was uh, mounted by a black German Shepherd. That's why this pup looks this awesome. She's going to turn out to be a very, very awesome dog. Hello, my wonderful people. How are you doing? How have you been? It's another exciting day, another exciting episode here at Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. And I'm back at Paul Farm Kennel visiting Moses, and he has a new friend who he's going to introduce, of course. And Kamakawida, I'm your girl, Linda Kenyita, and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Keep watching, keep subscribing, and let's hand it over to Moses so that he can reintroduce him himself reintroduce his dog and also take us through the kennel and his dogs hello hello guys my name is moses morigi of Pofam kennel uh, i want to take this opportunity again to invite you guys as you've heard this is my new friend his name is called stone stitch 
Uh, it's a kind of a bobble that not many, not many people are used to. These colors, you can see, is a shade of uh, white and black. Many guys call him a heifer. Some guys call him a cow. But he's not that. He's a bobble. He's a piebald. This color is called piebald. Very unique. Uh, and I'm sure some guys would get maybe interest in a piebald uh, bobble. So uh, let me talk about temperament of bobbles. Bobbles have varied temperaments. And if you know, if you've checked and you've seen my dogs, I love bobbles with a calm temperament, stable, will be very easy with a, to, to even to a visitor. Uh, Stitch is meeting Linda today, but Stitch has no problem with Linda. So he has a very stable uh, temperament, very easy with people, very easy with other dogs. Let me talk also about uh, Stitch. Stitch, uh, his age is uh, he's six years old. As you can see, he's uh, not a very young dog, but he's very much young at heart. If Stitch runs around, you could probably guess he's like a year or so. A very, very nice and wonderful dog. Moses, um from my last visit uh, and today, I've noticed that you have some new dogs, which are mature dogs. Like, can you talk about acquiring uh, mature dogs and does it come with any challenges and how does it, from the, from the old home where it's coming from to your new home, how does it integrate even with the other dogs? Acquiring a mature dog is not very easy. Acquiring a mature dog is the next level. Actually, the normal level should be you should, uh, a dog should be acquired at a puppy stage. So the dog is trained, you get to know the temperament of the dog and all that. But there comes a point in time whereby uh, one might want to acquire a mature dog. I reach at that point. Now, for one to acquire a mature dog, you have to know the temperament of the dog. Very important. You don't want to bring a mature dog and then the dog comes in and start biting people, start uh, killing people around. So you have to check for the temperament of the dog. Another thing which is very important, you have to look uh, the reasons as to why you're bringing the dog. For example, if you want to bring in a mature dog and you want to bring him with an intention of uh, breeding, you also have to be certain, if possible, about the fertility of the dog, the, sp uh, the sperm count of the dog. Is the dog able to sire? That's another challenge that one has to face when he wants to bring in a mature dog. But as you can see, if you bring in a dog with a nice temperament, if you bring in a dog because you love him and there are plans you have for him, if you just give a dog love, the dog will give love back. Yeah. Let's talk about owning big dogs. You know, big dogs are something people see and they're like, wow, that's something I would want to own. What are the challenges? What are the do's? How do you need to prepare yourself before you decide now, let me take this poor bell home? For you to have a big dog, it has challenges, it has advantages, it has pros and cons. Let me start with the disadvantages. To have a big dog like this, you have to be ready to feed the dog, the dogs. Bobbles eat and they eat a lot. Of course, you need to manage the quantity of food they eat, but you really have to be ready to feed the dog to the uh, required uh, uh, quantities. That's a, a, a challenge of having a big dog. Another challenge of course of having a big dog is that uh, it can be called a challenge, also maybe a plus to some people, is that when people see you walking your dog, many people run away. You think you're going to make friends with big dogs but you find many people running away from you. Why? Because it's psychological. Many people see the dog, they see that uh, this, 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 uh, this animal is coming to, to attack them. So that's another challenge of having big dogs. But also having big dogs uh, also have advantages. Let me specifically talk about the bobel. I, ha I love having bobels because they have very, very good temperament. And then bobels don't bark a lot. You see where I stay is a place where I just need peace, tranquility, uh, not too much noise. Now there's a bobel for you. In case if I had a German Shepherd here, in case if I had a Swiss Shepherd or these small, small dogs, they're very nice. But the problem is the noise will not be easy to control. This guy is just as easy as you see him. After he's eaten, after he's gone for walks, he just rests, no barking, rest, wait for you to give him the next assignment. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You, you've talked about noise and noise control. I've, I've noticed something when we were feeding your dogs that the dogs are quite chilled. Is that something that comes with the temperament of the dog or does that require training that when you're feeding your dogs, uh, if I can use uh, a Kenyan language, Hawaja <laughs> Koroka. Well, I think I can say it's almost like a two, uh, it's almost like a double edged sword. First, the dog has to be socialized. 
you have to make sure that you you expose the dog to people, expose the dog to other dogs. The more you socialize the dog, the more the dog will be calm and it will have a stable uh, temperament. Though still, uh, it is true that you ca that uh, aggression is also in the blood. You can breed and you can find an aggressive puppy. Why will this puppy be aggressive? Because the parents and the bloodline are from uh, they breed aggression. I have one such kind of a dog, but uh, I've taken a lot of training and all that to make sure that she's calm. So two things. Make sure you socialize the dog, and then if you want a calm dog, make sure you buy a puppy from a bloodline that, is, that, pro uh, that portrays calmness and all that. Yeah. We are in an urban setup. Are there any challenges that comes from having like more than two or three dogs in such a setup? Yeah, 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 of course, in an urban setup, there are challenges. Number one, you don't want to be dirty. You don't want the place smelling. You don't want to make your, uh, uh, your neighbors wondering what's happening, what's happening with your neighbor. So you have to make sure you're extremely clean. As you've noticed, our kennels are clean. These dogs, they never poop. They never sus in their kennel, something that I think many people might wonder how. But they are, we've taken them through a drill whereby they are walked every morning, they are walked every evening. Every time they are walked, they go out, they poop, they do all their stuff there. When they come in, they know it's in their system that in here we maintain clean, cleanliness, we're here to eat, we're here to drink water, we're here to have fun, but they know pooping and sourcing, all that is done outside the compound. Of course, there are places where we take them in the bush, they go and do their stuff there. So it depends with how you've taken your dog through the training and make sure they understand the drill, make sure they understand the program through which you want to take them through. Yeah. When it comes to now dogs having dogs, when it comes to the authority, is there any form of authorization that you should be keeping these dogs here? Or how does that go for somebody who would want to start having their dogs in their urban homes? Uh, all right. Uh, I know many people, many people in urban setup, they have dogs. They keep dogs like any other pet. Of course, I doubt if anyone would be demonized for having a pet. But of course, they also the next level whereby maybe you might want to let the city council know that you have a dog. That is something which is very simple. Just visit them, tell them I have a pet. Uh, if there are paperwork uh, to be given, you get the paperwork. But these dogs are, n are naturally take, uh, taken as a, as, a, as a, how can I call it, as just pets that you have around. And uh, actually, uh, in, the current, in the current times, very many people have pets in their houses. Of course, uh, other people have uh, cats and all that. But there are very many people nowadays having dogs in their compounds, living with dogs. Yeah. What is the process of rehoming a dog, a puppy? And for you as a breeder, what steps do you entail to ensure that your dogs go to a home that they, were, they are well taken care of? Have you ever had any cases of somebody that got a puppy and they were not able to, to even take care of the dog? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. To rehome a puppy, uh, it's very important for you to make sure that your puppy goes to a worthy home. A worthy home, if possible, a home better than the home that the puppy has just left. So uh, that's why you find that there are some dogs being sold at a, a very, very high price. Not sold per se, but rehomed at a price. Now, if somebody is able to meet the price of the puppy, chances are he's also able to take care of the feeding and all that. Now, you have to make sure if, uh, that, that the, dog, the puppy goes to a rightful place. Personally, there are times I visit the home where the puppy will go. Uh, there's one experience I've had. There's a dog I rehomed to uh, a friend of mine. The guy is well mannered and all that, but the guy uh, fell short in terms of knowledge. I went, found one of, the, uh, one of my dogs there uh, that I rehomed to him. The dog was very much malnourished, and I, I really, I really, I really, I really was shocked. I asked my friend, "Excuse me, guy, are you are you deworming these dogs? What are these dogs eating?" And for sure, the dogs were being dewormed. But unfortunately, this guy did not have knowledge in terms of feeding dogs. This guy was feeding, uh, was feeding the dogs, uh, how can I call it, soya beans, plant protein. And you see, these, these are carnivorous animals. They are mostly meant to eat meat. They are mostly meant to eat uh, protein, uh, animal protein. So of course, I talked to that guy. I, 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 I explained to him a lot, gave him, a, gave him uh, some knowledge. And from there, he started applying the knowledge and giving them uh, animal protein. So uh, it's very important to make sure you follow up with the puppy that you've rehomed. Make sure the puppy is okay. Because at the end of it, at the end of all of this, we just want the, pu the dogs to live the life. Make sure the dogs live the life. Uh, when the dog dies, if there's a dog heaven, he'll go there and give testimonies and say how well he lived his life. <laughs>
<laughs> Let me laugh. Yesterday was Sunday. That's why we are praying and fasting and dog heavens. We are still in, we are still calling the grace of yesterday's service, right? <laughs> so now <laughs> you've talked about um, knowledge. What do you think, like as a dog community, what should we be doing to be able to get this knowledge out there? Of course, this is one of those channels we are we are, we, we are doing that. But do you think that there's something extra that should be done? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot that we need to do. There's a lot that we need to do. The people listening to us, uh, Google is your friend. Uh, Google a lot, but even most importantly, visit as many kennels as you can. You see, just by coming here, you can learn a lot. By visiting a kennel, you can go. You can learn a, learn a lot. If you want to keep a dog, please make sure you're ahead in terms of knowledge. Don't have two dogs and you have a knowledge at one level. If you want to have one dog, make sure the level of your knowledge is at level three. Have one dog. If you want to have ten dogs, make sure your knowledge is level 20. Actually, that's the way it's supposed to go. But uh, one should not let the love for dogs override their desire for knowledge. Let them know there's a dog. Let them know how to communicate with the dog. Let them know what the dog needs. Some people just think that, that a dog only needs food. No, a dog needs food. Dog needs to be walked, and even most importantly, dogs needs love. You see what is happening right now. Stitch is very happy because he's feeling the vibe. He's feeling our vibe. He's feeling the love. So don't just walk your dog, feed your dog, and lock the dog in the kennel. Please have some time. Bond with your dog. Let the let the dog pat you the way Stitch is doing. The dog understands so much love language. Yeah. No, let's go to the health of your dogs. Are there any health challenges that comes with having ball belts? Uh, definitely, if you have a dog, and if you have not even just a ball belt, any other dog, there, ha there are health issues. So for you to have a dog, very, very important, you must have a vet handy. You must have just a doctor for the dogs. If you have a baby, definitely you have, you'll, you'll have a... How the baby doctor is called? Is it pediatricians? Yeah, you'll have a pediatrician at your, at your phone call. Anything happens, you call the pet. Uh, with my dogs here, they also have their vet. And their vet is always available to take care of, of them. I may not necessarily understand everything to do with their health issues. But of course, I give that provision. They're always checked by the vets, always vaccinated, given uh, the warmers and all that. That is also very important. Health of the dogs is also a priority. I've ever lost uh, a couple of puppies. Uh, I lost the first puppies. I, I lost puppies uh, to Pavo when I didn't have a vet. Uh, I was just doing things out of my own knowledge, out of my own just desires and all that. But just due to lack of understanding, there are there are puppies I lack. I, I lost. They died. Uh, I, I later come to I came to learn that it was due to Pavo. But if you have a vet handy, such kind of cases are extremely limited. Extremely low. So uh, if you have dogs, you must have a vet. I think that's the only uh, thing I can say. Um, we've seen your dog taking breakfast. That was one meal. So c kindly take us through the feeding programs of your dogs. How many times do you feed them? Like now when they later eat during the day, what are they going to eat? All right, all right. When it comes to feeding, uh, two things are very important. Number one, uh, don't overfeed your dog. Number two, don't underfeed your dog. If you overfeed your dog, you will uh, give the dog too much weight, too much weight more than the, 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 the structure of the dog can carry. So there are some dogs, if you see, they are very big, but the structure is small. Most of them, they have very poor pastens. Yeah, if you see, uh, actually a bobble is supposed to stand almost like a feet. Yeah, this is the way, this, this is the way uh, bobbles feet are supposed to be. But you'll find a bobble feet lying like this, almost like it's ready to give you a high five. That means that the pastern is poor, the pastern is weak. The dog needs too much calcium. But where did the problem begin? The problem began when the dog was overfed and the structure wasn't able to carry that weight. So for my bobbles, I feed them twice. Uh, other guys feed once. I feed them twice in the morning and in the evening. Uh, as you've seen in the, uh, in, the, uh, 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 in the feeding program, as you've seen, we give them little portions uh, for breakfast. We give them little portions for dinner. Breakfast, they do pellets pellets, eggs, and goat milk. But for dinner, we majorly give them uh, meat. But this meat, we go alternating. We have day-old chicks, we have uh, chicken heads, we have beef, we have chicken. So you go alternating so that the dog don't get too much used to one meal. Uh, if, they get too much, if they get used and the, the meal is too much monotonous, at some point, 
they'll not even finish their food. Yeah. Uh, you've talked about weight. Let's talk about that scar there at the knee. What is it and wh why does it occur and how can one avoid it? Uh, this mark that you see here is called a pressure pad. Pressure pad uh, uh, comes uh, so much to the big, big, big dogs, the heavy dogs. You see when Stitch is asleep like this, there's too much weight underneath the legs. And uh, because of the weight, and then if the dog sleeps on a hard surface, some hair, will, he'll begin losing hair at some points. They're called pressure points or pressure pads. So uh, it is possible to keep your dog away from such kind of pressure pads. Most importantly, make sure that the place where your dog sleeps, there is some cushioned area where he can go and sleep and uh, it will prevent such kind of uh, uh, occurrence. Uh, it's, it's very simple. It's like going in a grass, in a place where there's full of grass and then you drop a stone. If you remove the stone after some time, the other areas will have grass, but the place where there was a pressure of the stone, the grass will have dried. The same principle applies here. So the softer the beddings, the more it will be uh, for, their, for their elbows and all that. Now, barbells, cool dogs, calm dogs, what's about their training? Can they be trained to be as uh, flexible as other smaller dogs, let's say like the German Shepherds? Yes, 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 it is very possible to train a dog. Uh, most importantly is to make sure you use a trainer because in, in, uh, in this dog, uh, in this dog uh, activities, there are many things. Personally, I'm a breeder. I just breed. Uh, for me, you'll find that I just want to make sure I produce a nice-looking pup. After producing a nice-looking pup, the pup can go to the next level. The pup can go to the level of being handed over to a trainer. Of course, in training, there are levels. The first and the most important level is the basic training. Your dog is supposed to know how to sit. Your dog is supposed to know how to wait for you to feed the dog uh, a meal. You don't need a trainer for that. You can train your dog uh, to sit. You can train your dog to wait. You can train your dog to get in the kennel. If you want the dog to get in the kennel, you don't have to call a trainer. Just, just use your instinct and train the dog. That is called basic uh, level of training. Of course, there are higher levels of sniffing, the higher levels of aggression, and uh, one, could, one, one, could use, one could use a trainer for all that. Originally, a bobel was bred to uh, protect a family and basically to protect the family from wild animals. As you know, a bobel generally is supposed to be big, supposed to be wide with a wide chest. Uh, of course, big bone, big head. The structure and all that composition is just supposed to protect uh, a family from wild animals. So a bobel is a very, very good dog for guarding. If you want a dog for guarding, a bobel is a dog for you. Of course, there are also other factors like psychological. No guy can just come he in here uh, with stitch lying like this. You see a big dog, you just know that this, this dog can take you down. So they are basically for guarding. If you want to use uh, a boa bell for sniffing, that is not generally uh, one of the reasons what, what, uh, that they were bred for. It might be a, 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 an uphill task. It might not be easy, but if one wants to do that, maybe they could do that. But bobels very, very good for uh, guarding. Now, Moses, I've come across people who are acquiring dogs, even in such a family setup, and they are training the dogs for aggression. Like, out of your experience with bobels, is it advisable to train it for aggression? I think I will answer you not. Uh, I will answer you from experience and also from uh, generally what I think. A bobel, you see, is a big dog. Yeah, and uh, a bobel naturally is aggressive. If a bobel finds uh, an environment or a situation that is aggravating to the, the dog, the bobel will get to its natural instincts and it will be very, very much aggressive. So personally, this is my opinion. It's not, uh, it's not something that I want to be, ta uh, to be taken as a thumb of rule. Uh, a bobel should not, if possible, be trained for aggression. Naturally, he's aggressive. If you train a bobel for aggression, Bobels are very strong. Let's say you, you have trained the dog for aggression, you want to control the dog. You will need too much energy to hold the dog as strong as stitch to, to prevent him from maybe uh, biting someone or chasing something, you see? So personally, my preference is I don't train my bobels for aggression. I just let them be natural. When their natural aggression comes in, I try to know how to tame, how to control and all that. 
So I also understand today is the day of your vet visit. What exactly is the vet here for? Uh, can we have a chat with him also? Yeah, very true. Today we are very fortunate. Uh, today is one of those days where uh, the vet comes to see the dogs. Of course, he'll, he'll come for maybe one of my reasons, but also most importantly to check what else the dog might need. So yeah, today uh, uh, my canons, uh, their vet is here. We could have a chat with him. Uh, here, what is uh, how he'll check the dogs, what he wants to do to the dogs. I think it will be also an awesome uh, time. Yeah. Hi, wonderful people. As you can see now, we have a guest. Uh -huh. Now, this guest is going to introduce himself. He can tell us what he does and we can talk more about Pavo. I know these questions about Pavo are so many. And if you're watching us for the first time, stick around so that you can learn about Pavo. Uh -huh, Mr. Vet, welcome. Introduce yourself and say hi to my people. So, uh, my name is Karanja Bunfis. I'm a vet uh, based in Ruiru, Kenya. Uh, I work for a vet company. I'm a vet organization called Max Vet Care. So, I'm one of the field vets for Max Vet Care. Now, today I'm at Po Farm Kennels. Uh, uh, generally, today I'm doing a very simple procedure. I'm doing basic uh, general health checkup for all the dogs, but I'm also doing uh, uh, injectable deworming for all the dogs that are in the compound. So Linda has mentioned uh, Pavo. Uh, basically, Pavo is a, a viral. It's a viral disease that affects canines, but we have Pavo in almost each and every other species, including pigs and uh, cats. So. Um, uh, Specifically in dogs, PAVO affects dogs between the ages of two and four months. And uh, PAVO strikes when you don't vaccinate your dogs correctly. Let me specify correctly. People do call and say, I vaccinated my dog, but it still uh, got PAVO. What that person didn't do is that they didn't vaccinate the dog correctly. Now, correctly means getting two jabs of PAVO and two jabs of DHLP. That's when you can basically say that you've crossed the, the, the red zone for PAVO uh, infection. But basically, PAVO is a viral disease, it's a contagious viral disease that affects uh, dogs mostly from two to four months of age. Yes. So, at what age do you get to give you vaccinations? Now, uh, for dogs, we do PAVO vaccinations from four weeks. The first vaccination should be from four to six weeks. Then you follow up uh, with the second jab four weeks from there. And then uh, the third jab, which is DHLB, again four weeks. Basically what we're saying is at one month, you do the first jab. And the second month, the second PAVO jab. At three months, we do the first DHLB jab. At four months, you can do the second DHLB jab plus a rabies jab. Then you repeat the rabies jab at six months. Then from there, these adult dogs all get uh, DHLP and rabies boosters yearly. Once every year, we meet with them for the basic uh, booster vaccinations. Yeah. Now, another query you'll always get. Linda, we've got a puppy, but it's eating, but it's not growing. It is losing a lot of hair. What can we do? Mm -hmm. uh, shedding. Let's talk about shedding. There are three things that can affect shedding. For example, we can see this specific dog has a little bit of shedding. Now, uh, uh, there are three basic things that can result to shedding. One, poor diet. If you have a poor diet, it doesn't matter how the, the rest of the factors are, you're going to uh, have shedding in your dog. Number two, if you don't deworm your dog properly, I'm, I'm specifying on properly because, hello, I, I, I dewormed my dog, but, you know, for example, for this guy, if you give this guy one tablet and then you say you've dewormed him, uh, you really haven't dewormed him properly. So the word is properly. Look at your dog. How, how many kgs uh, does your dog weigh? Calculate that with the, uh, with the number of tablets you're giving. But get this information from a vet so that you do the correct thing. Then number three is grooming. For example, if you get a Maltese spitz, uh, you feed it right, you deworm it right, but at the end of the day, the puppy is still going to shed. Why? Because of the breed. That breed generates sheds. So to aid that, I'm to make sure that uh, the fur doesn't go to your clothes, I'm to your uh, couch, make sure you have a comb 
or you have uh, 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 grooming tools so that you can regularly groom your dog. Even if it's just once a week, you just comb your dog once a week, especially for the long-haired dogs. For short hairs like barbells, generally a good diet and good deworming should do. Yes. Properly deworming. Now let's talk about deworming. How often do you deworm, should one deworm their dogs? There are two types of deworming. Uh, you can do deworming in two, uh, in two different types. You can give tablets, for example, this is an example of one of the tablets that we use. And you can do injectable dewormings. Now, when and how often? Now, uh, oral dewormers, the tablets, should be done once every three months to each and every dog. Basically, even humans, we do deworming once every three months. So the same goes for the dogs. You do deworming once every dog, once every three months. Proper deworming, following the the, uh, the 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 weight of your dog and the required tablets. Number two, the injectable dewormings uh, are a different kind of deworming. Mostly, we do them to protect the dogs against heartworms and the lungworms. Uh, they should be done at a maximum of twice per year. But if you can do just once a year, is enough. Yes. Pests. Linda, my dogs have been attacked by fleas and ticks. Is that environmental or is there somehow that we can control the dogs biologically or medically? That's a good question because that's a question that I can't go a day without being asked. Uh, my dog has fleas, my dog has ticks. Now, basically, um, it's going to be a very huge challenge to control tick and fleas. For example, uh, if you are in an environment that is full of ticks and fleas. For example, uh, most people who complain about tick and fleas have poultry in the environment. And the dogs are able to, to, uh, you know, to move to the poultry sheds. Now, poultry harbor a lot of fleas. So it's going to be difficult to control fleas. But basically, we can control fleas using about three or four different types of uh, methods. You can give tablets. You can use flea and tick collars. You can use spot-on drugs that you put on the skin of the animal, and you can do uh, kennel fumigation using uh, basic uh, drugs for fumigation. But basically, controlling fleas is more of an environmental factor, because if you walk uh, such a dog in an for example, Maasai do have cows roaming around. If you walk your dog immediately after the, the Maasai cows have passed by a certain area, your dog is going to get fleas. Your compound might be okay, but where you walk your dog might not be a good place. Now, uh, the other thing, if you look at this floor, uh, this floor is very nice to help you control tick and fleas. But if you are if you're keeping your dogs in an environment where they have direct contact with the soil, soil harbors fleas, soil harbors ticks. So you might do spot on, you might do tablets, but so long as your dogs are in an environment where they're in con direct contact with the, the soil, going to be a problem but if you use the four different types of methods of uh, dealing with tick and fleas you should be all right yeah. Yeah. if you have any other questions those are the major questions that you people called me asking me for but if you have any other question you can put them down there at the comment section and then we can invite that Karanja again to tell us these things Emma, how do you think what do you think you people you, you are my boss, Cindy. People, thank you for sticking with me through the end. Thank you for watching. And I hope you've subscribed. I hope you've learned something. Leave your comment if you've done. If you have any questions, remember you can always ask them at the comment section. And also, if you'd want to partner with us, you can always leave us an email at kenyadogtv at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. This is your girl, Linda Kenyita, and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Until the next one, see you. Many, many thanks, you guys, for watching. Thank you for watching Dog TV channel. Thank you for watching Pop Farm Edition. Uh, you guys can follow us. You can follow us at Instagram, uh, at Pop Kennels. You can follow us on Facebook, Pofam Kennel. And then could be, if you uh, need me, if you want to call me, you can call me. My number is 0723674161. Get in touch with us and get to have a good, good dog. Uh, before I sign out, kindly allow me to answer one question that very many people ask me. Very many guys ask me, what do you feed your dogs? How come your dogs are too big? Now, there's one thing that you guys have to know that uh, a dog becomes big not only based on the food that they eat, but also based on the, on the genes that they have. 
This guy is rich. He's very, very well bred. He's coming from a very good bloodline. His puppies will definitely be big, just like the other dogs that you've seen. But if you find a puppy from, for example, not a very well bred puppy, the, the features will show. When the puppy grows, the features will show. So the apple mostly does not fall very far away from the tree. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. This is a dog TV channel. Uh, we want you guys to subscribe. This year we are hoping and praying we reach 100,000 uh, subscribers. So you guys subscribe, share, comment. Let's do this thing. Dog lovers, this is what we do. Otherwise, as I sign out, let me give a shout out to very, very important people in my life. Let me give a shout out to my wife, uh, Cynthia, and my son, Toria Wise. These guys have really, really, really been supporting me. See what this guy is doing, licking me. Without support from family, I mean, it would be hard. Many thanks, my wife. Many thanks, my son. Also, let me give a shout out to my friend, Dean Weedy. You guy, you're doing a good job. I call you Bobel Professor. Uh, many thanks. Uh, Dean Widi, Umbo Africa. Otherwise, thank you so much, you guys. God bless you. Good to have a chuckle in case your, uh, your dog has stomach problems. Cold liver oil for the skin. Your dog should have records how they're vaccinated, how they're dewormed, and all that. Good to have all your dogs in a collar or in a chop chain. This is very important for controlling the dog. Let your dog eat nice plates. They can lick without having problem of uh, rust and all that. You could also have playful dogs. Have some balls, bowling with the, with the dog. For aggressive dog during vaccination, during studying, it's good to have a muscle. For, for any of this, you can hit me up. Thank you guys.